Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to Business Focus here on TV3. Today is the 2nd of April 2018 as the beginning of the second quarter and rightly so there's been a lot of analysis. We're going to be doing a retract of uh, the first quarter and how it's been over the period. But the Millennium Development Authority, that's MEDA, has denied reports that the CH Group pulled out of the concession race due to inadequate information provided about the financial state of the electricity company of Ghana. Now, CEO of MEDA, Martin and Sam Benjamin, has been speaking exclusively to TV3 Business and he's also saying that companies were privy to the same information. You want to stay with us for that exclusive interview we will be playing to you here on Business Focus. With 37% of the value of all payments now made digitally, Ghana is on course to be a leader in the region with great potential to expand economic opportunities for businesses. But tech expert and vice president of Comscop, Femi Oshiga, is admonishing government to put in place the right infrastructure to support the digital agenda. We'll be talking about that tonight here on Business Focus as we continue to highlight the works of young Ghanaian startups in our mover segment as always on Business Focus. Today, our searchlight fell on Sefa Corp, that's Esther, founder, designer of Sefa Corp Fabric Accessories. We're telling you more about that. Stay with us as we get into here a lot more. Plus, the Bank of Ghana said the yield on its weekly 91-day bill eased to 13.31% at an auction on Thursday compared to 13.36% at the last sale of March 23. We're finding out more on how the stocks are faring, your investment, the currency and the commodities markets as well. All tonight here on Business Focus. But first, we're finding out how uh, the news has been in the world of business tonight here on Business Focus. Right after this break, do stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Business Focus here on TV3. Now feel free to join us with your thoughts as we go on tonight. But the Millennium Development Authority, that's MEDA, has handed over 12 pickup vehicles valued at $477,000 to uh, the electricity company of Ghana. But we'll be getting into that. But according to uh, the Millennium Development Authority, that's MEDA, the decision to have two companies, as a matter of fact, uh, now go in into the final stages of the concession is not to favor a particular uh, company or the two companies. Remember ADF, that was a company uh, tipped by many experts to be the one to indeed get into the last bit of the concession, pulled out at the final stages. It generated a lot of discussion as to what exactly could have led to that decision uh, for the company to pull out. We caught up with the Managing Director, in front of the Chief Executive Officer of the Millennium Development Authority, that's MEDA, to give us some more details of exactly what led to the two companies being shortlisted for the final stages of the concession and why the EDF pulled out. This is Business Focus. My name is Grace Hamwasari. We have an exclusive interview with CEO of MEDA, Mr. Martin Isan Benjamin. He's going to tell us all that you and I need to know about the ECG concession, what MEDA does, as well as the other projects. Let's start from the concession, the first day to where we are now. Take us quickly through the process. Well, if I would not go too far back, I'll say that um, we issued the amended RFP revised and amended RFP on the 30th of November. Um, that was intended to, to procure the services of a world-class concessionaire to, to, to manage the ECG PSP project. Now, at that stage, we, we had four pre-qualified bidders come in to pick the documents, the proposals. They went and worked on it. They asked questions, they asked for data. We were lucky to have quite a lot of information sent to them by ECG and other players, Energy Commission, PURC, and all the others. In the course of the process, they came to us and said, the documents were not flowing, the data was not flowing in as fast as they wanted and therefore it would affect their ability to meet the 26th of February deadline. And once a 
bidder comes forward with that sort of request, you, you also sit back and look at the situation on the ground and realize that, yes, they may be right, and therefore you release, you release a, a note to all of them indicating that one, two, or three of them have come forward asking for extension of time. So we moved the date from the 26th of February, the submission date, to the 26th of March. And all remained in the process. But soon thereafter, one of the consortium, the consortia left. They announced to us that they could no longer continue. Um, because I believe um, that was a boardroom decision, and therefore they would not be part of it anymore. Um, so we don't know why EDF pulled out? No, no, it's a very test, test uh, uh, statement on the letter, being that unfortunately they are not able to present that afternoon. I would say that previously they had told us that they needed more time to do their financials, and others were said they were ready. And once they are all ready, I thought that we had given them one month extension, and there was no need giving them an additional extension. Particularly, we are working to a very tight timeline. Some experts said they would have preferred EDF, but we realized on the, the, day, the deadline day they pulled out. Has that come to the notice of MEDA, and then um, what's the way forward? I don't know where they've read uh, the background to these companies from. I don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you is that these six of them earlier on were pre-qualified. Pre-qualified means that they were assessed and six of them were pre-qualified. Two pulled out earlier, then four were left, and the four were going forward. So for us, our mandate is to work with the pre-qualified bidders. Now, if you, if you argue that the pre-qualified bidders are not good enough, then there's a problem. But to me, yes, maybe on a, if for, from our own point of view, you can do uh, rank them A, B, C, D. But there are six. Let's say they all pass, and they all supposed to be uh, capable of managing. They should be able to manage, and therefore, I cannot sit here at this moment and start undermining the people who have been pre-qualified to do a job except somebody has additional information, which I don't have. But probably they have their own rankings, mm -hmm. and they would have preferred A or B or C to, to win. But that's not how you do it. No. You let them put their documents together, and let's see what it is that they are answering to. And if they can answer the questions properly, why not? And what is the level of commitment on the part of the companies for the 51% local Ghanaian and how are they pulling through that? Some of them had challenges forming the local consortium. So we said, fair enough. Um, you have your um, foreign co consortium. The membership, you know, you're happy with them. Let us have them. Having brought them in, we extended the time. Mind you, the 51% is a Ghana government policy. And it's a policy statement that was made by the president, and he stands by it. And we have no choice but to work with that 51%. And so far, the two people who have submitted have not written or come forward to me to tell me that they are not comfortable with it. They have come in, they've wasted, spent energy and time, they've prepared their documents, and they brought it to us. Therefore, I know they are on board. Have we had some of the companies complaining about the tariff reduction that's the president announced, which um, PURC has also sanctioned and is expected to happen on 1st April. Initially, you say, oh, the foreigner is coming. Why have you reduced your tariff? It will make him. Why are you, why are you pleading for him? Why are you not saying Ghanaians are going to benefit? But why is everybody looking at the negative side of something that is done for the common good? I mean, we're doing this for Ghana. The government and his, and, 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 and his team have sat together and said tariffs must go down. Why is agriculture's tariff maybe lower than ours? Why? So therefore, we want to measure ourselves. We want to be competitive. To be competitive, tariffs must go down. The same way interest rates must go down. Tariff, come to us and say uh, it's not good enough. Yes, it will be painful. 
But I can tell you that at the end of the day, the government has thought through a process. They have an agenda. And to me, as a manager, I, I would want to do everything possible to sustain a lower tariff rate. MEDA is the accountable entity. So when you talk about transparency, you, you want to come to MEDA and ask them, what is it that you are doing? Um, there's a lot of hearsay, a lot of it. In this country, everybody has a stance on these sort of things. And therefore, where they get their data from, information from, I may not have the same information. But as far as this office is concerned, we are open to everybody. We give whatever equally. Uh, there's equity in the way we, we, we manage all the process, all the bidders, because we want to put our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's very painful to see all the effort we make for us to, to undermine the effort by not being transparent. Mm -hmm. So um, all things being equal, when are we likely to announce uh, Indeed, by 6th of September, you, you will know. As we sit here now, mm -hmm. the proposal will be evaluated for the technical and the financial. Now, you, you do the technicals first, then you come to a point where you would have um, exhausted their technical capacity, and then you look at their financials mm -hmm. to see what they are proposing. When that is done, to, to, to cabinet, cabinet will have a look at it, it will approve the conditions and everything that we've done, it goes to Parliament, Parliament will debate it, and in the long run, they will release it to us so that we come to a close, a financial close, and then we move on to the 6th of September deadline. So that's uh, the response that the Millennium Development Authority is giving, denying reports that the CH Group pulled out of the concession raised due to inadequate information provided about the financial state of the electricity company of Ghana. Remember, three companies were expected to submit their proposals for the final bidding process of the concession. That's Manila Electric Company from Philippines, uh, that's Meralco, CH Group Ghana, EDF, and then uh, Veolia SA and BX, BXC Company Ghana Limited, registered and operating in Ghana. But Mida announced that two companies, that's BXC and Meralco, were the two companies that met the deadline for the submission of the proposal for the concession. Now, that development generated a lot of discussion as to what exactly could have been the case. You've heard from the Mida CEO what the situation is and what led to this particular one. We're going to be getting uh, some more reactions to this. Uh, Kojo Poko in Safwa is an energy expert. He's going to be joining us very shortly via Skype. We'll have a conversation on this. Plus, the government's commitment to digitizing the Ghanaian economy and the benefits that is expected to reap in the next few years ahead of us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break here on Business Focus to stay. Welcome back to Business Focus here on TV3. With 37% of the value of all payments now made digitally, Ghana is on course to be a leader in the region with great potential to expand economic opportunities for businesses. And in September 2017, if you recall, the Finance Ministry and the UN-based Better Than Cash Alliance released a report documenting the country's progress in creating an economy where everyone can pay and get paid digitally instead of by cash, that's fiscal cash. Now, the data also predicts that if the government continues to make progress, savings could reach over 250 million Ghana cities each year, which may result in more than one, one billion, thereabout, Ghana cities by 2020. But according to tech expert and vice president of Comscope, Femi Oshiga, government must have the right infrastructure in place to support the digital agenda over a long-term period. Wireless technology has helped hugely that various studies that every X percentage of adoption in wireless adds to a percentage point of, of GDP to the countries. Uh, that's particularly uh, uh, str a strong effect in Africa. We can see what mobile networks have done across the African continent, whether it be Nigeria or Ghana or Kenya or Zambia, Zimbabwe, Cote d'Ivoire, wherever it may be. Um, now, 
we've crossed the voice divide, largely. Yeah. We're trying to get to the data divide, and that data divide, that's the next challenge because you have to carry so much traffic back to a central office, process it. All that processing today, all the Google that you type in is still largely done in the States, and, and that's gradually coming down in the continent. That data needs to be processed, and then redistributed back to, the, to its endpoints. We're getting there, primarily favorable regulation, right? I mean, we, we want to see our network operators do well and invest in more and more technology and increase adoption rates. When you have the technology available, everything follows. Then you can really talk about paperless and everything follows, right? That's been going quite well in Ghana. Uh, we can't say that of all the countries in Africa would like to see more of that. Solve that problem specific to those large buildings. So that's uh, that, that advice or that expectation that uh, we have of government in digitizing the economy and the benefits that will come thereof going forward. But the use of made in Ghana fabrics for accessories is becoming very popular by the day. At Sefako, the catch is match it right and you good to go. All right, a very good evening to you, and you're still watching Business Focus. This is the Mover segment, and my name is Nanikia Mensah Bampa. Tonight, we are coming to you from Mango Down, inside Dansiman, with the CEO of Sefako, a lady who is into clothing, accessories, talking about anything African. Good evening, Sefako, and good to have you good on evening. Business Focus tonight. Thank you for having me today. Tell us, who is Sefako, and why African print? clothing accessories. Okay. Sefako is my name, and then my brand name is also Sefako. Well, I started this accessories uh, right after doing my service. I started working in this recruitment company just a few months on the line. And I was looking for a better job, actually, because the pay wasn't too good. And a colleague entered the office with a simple African fabric. I like designs. I like creative stuff. From when I was little, I used to mold, I used to draw and sketch and all that. So I said to myself, okay, I could do this necklace. I could try with my mom's pieces. She's a seamstress, by the way. So I went home and I tried a simple necklace. I thought it was nice, so I just wore one to church and people started asking me, where did you get it from? And I said, I made them myself. So then they started buying off my neck. And I said to myself, okay, I could do this and sell. Notwithstanding the fact that I still wanted to do, a to look, job, yeah, a good job. Because it was just a hobby. I was having fun. And anytime I come up with a new design, I'm like, oh, I'm excited. This is very beautiful. So, yeah, as time went on, people were demanding. I couldn't work properly. So then I had to stop. And comparing it, honestly, this is better than what I was doing. So I started coming up with designs and sometimes I get my inspiration from the type of fabric. Okay. So I look at the fabric and I, I can cut out a pattern and then make something out of it. What goes into the choice of uh, coming out of the fabric for a particular design? How do you select your fabrics for the designs? Okay, so when I started making these, I realized that it will go well with plain fabrics like the chiffons and all that. So, and Ghanaians like catchy things. So then my choice of fabric is anything bright with uh, more of red, yellow, blue, pink, especially these colors. Mm. For the dark colors, I barely use them because um, we are mostly in maybe plain black, plain white. Yeah, so, and depending on the person buying to Someone would be like, uh, I want a necklace with a dominating blue, dominating yellow. So when I make a sample necklace for that person, the next time I buy extra yards to make other necklaces. And then that's how I... Extra start. yards. Yeah. Within a month, how many yards do you buy to make these accessories? And let's see okay. which particular accessories do you focus on. Do you have any, any special plan coming out of the designs you come out with? 
Uh, I started initially with what you're wearing. I started with the Subura in town. It's called the Subura, this one in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the inspiration came from the, the cuts. Like, when you, when you take notes of this particular fabric, it has circular, small circles. So then the inspiration of this actually came from the design of the fabric. So I started using different colors of this Subura, and then I started going into other fabrics using the if, the, if if the fabric has nice patterns, then designs do come up. But as to where or how it comes up, I don't know. Maybe it's just from it's God. It's divine. Yes, eh? it's divine. Okay. Now, let's go into the issue of cost. But I would, I would want to begin from your startup capital, someone who has just completed national service. How much are we looking at? What did you start with? Yeah, I started with just 10 cities. 10 Ghana cities? Yes. What Ten cities. <laughs> um, let's say the fabric. I just used the piece from my mom, so I didn't really buy that. But um, I had to buy this locket. I went to town and then I asked of lockets for accessories. So then um, there are some that comes in two cities, five cities in the pack, and then this little beads. They are like crystals, also for the design of the back. That's what I used. And then um, my mom also had this cord. I had to put something in. So I, I thought to myself, okay, what can I use? I used to use uh, this rope for hanging stuff. It was really hard. Mm. Yeah. And I'm still using it anyway, but yeah. So I bought the lockets for the back, used um, the rope and also a fabric. How is the demand from your side? Um, honestly, the demand fluctuates, I should say. Sometimes you get just a call, someone wants to buy in bulk and resell. Some people do um, order for one or two. So initially, I used to wait for demands, but now every time I'm making more, right? So in case I post out there on my page or I advertise and someone wants it, at least I have five extra of a design. So then that's how I manage it. But going forward, I'm thinking of getting more people to train, to be able to meet or catch up with demand. But then I don't wait for an order, because you never know. Someone could just call you and say, OK, I need 20 items. I was coming to that to because we are in the Ghana month. And yeah. I'm sure even after the month of March, uh -huh. demand might increase for you. How yeah. ready are you to meet these demands? cash-wise and then resource-wise? Uh, I am ready. It, it only means I should stay late in the night. And if you're doing something for a long time also, you, you learn how to strategize, mm. like easier ways of doing things. So if you used to, let's say, sew one cord into a fabric design, you can make it 10 at once. You know you would need extra hands. Yes, I know. I don't see anyone here with you. Are there plants or you have people you're already working with? Producing these things, sometimes my dad helps me, right? Especially if I have to meet demands. Because he's been with my mom for these years, he knows how to sew. So when I tell him what to do, like with these capes, sometimes he'll just take off the brown paper for me. And then with other necklace designs, he'll stuff them. When I show him what to do, he, he really helps me. Um, finish them. I do the finishing myself, but with the process, he does help me meet demands, and I am really grateful. Yeah. Right, so you're still watching the Mover segment right here on Business Focus, and we're celebrating Ghana. As part of our celebration, we are looking at truly African designs, and tonight we are focusing our attention on clothing accessories with Sefa Ko. She's here with us telling us her story and how far she has come. But now, Sefako, I want to look at the challenges in this industry. One of the challenges are meeting demands, actually. Um, as I said earlier, I didn't used to do extra ones. I just wait for demand. But then someone could call you and say, I want 10. And you'll be like, I have five at the moment. So then you lose the other five. And also, sometimes to get what you want, especially for me, I didn't learn these. It came naturally. So you can start something and the stitches don't go well. And 
you have to meet demand. So you don't have to undo and also find other ways to make it perfect. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And you also have to stay up late to get it perfectly done. Should I be an investor? I want to invest in your business. Mm. How much would you want from me? Um, maybe 50,000 because I would want a bigger space, like a workshop and also a display shop where you can get all the accessories. Yeah, and with a workshop also, you'd have to rent a place, you have to get tools and all that. So I would want that or more. Yeah, for a start. So when I start training people, I can meet demands and be all over the place. How does it motivate you from where you're working from? And do you think one month is enough to celebrate Made in Ghana? I think for a start, um, it's a good initiative to have the Made in Ghana month because we need to exhibit our culture through our African prints and all that. And with what I'm doing, I know there are fabrics for clothing, so then it will conflict if you have accessories also on. But for some people also in the office, they have dress coats, they wear plain attires. So then you can still have a touch of made in Ghana items, like what I'm wearing. So I could wear this to an office, maybe just a limited edition of what I'm wearing. So it could always be, we can start from Fridays, and it could be an everyday thing also. Because uh, we could wear, we could have suits in fabrics, we could have pencil skirts in fabrics, we can have office wears in fabrics, and we could have even the plain uh, materials in fabric with a touch of accessory. That's where I come in. So you can have a little earring, you can have a bangle made with African prints, you could have a simple necklace choker with an African. You can have a touch of it, you can have a shoe made with African prints. And the whites love it, so why not love it as a Ghanaian? Trust me, you've given me my dress code for the rest <laughs> of the year. It's right here in my head. But let's look at you seated here. You started something good. There are other people out there who do some of these things as hobbies, but they're not motivated. What would you want to tell that person looking at you tonight? Okay, um, I would say I get them because sometimes you will think, okay, so with what I'm doing, it's just a hobby. It's just an accessory. How often am I going to make money out of it? How often are people going to demand it? And is it going to be worth it if I should resign or if I should still look for a job? They also try to educate you on why it's important to be an entrepreneur, to do your own stuff and promote Made in Ghana. So I think with their help, yeah. Okay, so there's that one person looking at you tonight. He or she might have a hobby which could be a business but is not motivated enough. What would you want to tell that person watching you? First of all, I would like to ask you if you enjoy what you're doing and if you're passionate about what you're doing. I mean, no one can motivate you more than yourself. So first of all, believe in what you're doing. Enjoy what you're doing. And people will enjoy what they see you're doing. So believe in what you're doing. Enjoy what you're doing. And people would enjoy. I stole that from Sefako Afiano, who is our mover for tonight. And we're still talking, celebrating Ghana, looking at her beautiful clothing accessories. This is the Pear Towels by Sefako. So that would do for the mover segment tonight. We appreciate your time being our mover and we celebrate you tonight. Well, my name is Nanikia Mensa Brampa. And don't forget that the hashtag is still on for the month of March right here at TV3. It's hashtag we celebrate GH on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. It's TV3 Ghana. That's it for the mover segment. There's more on Business Focus. Stay with us. All right, so that's Nanepia Mensa Brampa with the Mover segment. And this particular segment is dedicated to 
celebrating young Ghanaian startups that are uh, indeed doing a lot and employing and influencing society greatly. But just so you know, so live here on Business Focus here on TV3 earlier, we spoke to the CEO of the Millennium Development Authority, Das Mida, about some suggestions which could have really uh, fooled exactly why ADF pulled out of this whole concession period when we, do, we knew that there were three companies that had been shortlisted for the final stages of the concession uh, involving the electricity company of Ghana. I've been joined via Skype by uh, Kojo Poku. He's an energy expert uh, to help us do some more, uh, have a conversation further on what the media boss has been telling us. Kojo, thank you for your time this evening here on Skype. Now, according to the, the media boss, the CA group pulled out of the concession race because of their own, you know, uh, analysis of the situation, not because they did not have enough information about the financial state of ECG, as was earlier put out. Well, that issue has been a bit tricky. Um, and good evening, and good evening to your um, your viewers. I'm hoping that we will get a bit more clarification going forward on this um, EDF issue because EDF were one of the strong companies. You know, when we started this process. We had five companies. Yeah. We had uh, Engine, ADF, and then the three, Tata, BXD, and then uh, the Manila Group. And along the line, when the new government came in and introduced a 51% government holding, Engine now dropped off. And along the line, I think Tata also came off. So we're left with EDF. And of the BXC, Manila, and the EDF, EDF seemed to be the more... Um, should I say, well-known um, company that was involved in this process. And they were very proactive in data requests and uh, engaging ECG and MIDA in the process. So it was a bit surprising when last minute they pulled off. But if you remember, about a month ago, there was a letter that we all spoke about that they said yeah. they were having problem with financing. Absolutely. And I think that gave some of us a hint that they were having challenging putting the financial closure together. I see. But with this particular response by the MEDA boss, uh, would you say that it should put matters to rest? And let's focus on these two companies that have now finally been shortlisted, BXC, Meralco. So we're able to test the competence of the two in bringing the needed turnaround that is needed. And then it means all the... Well, one would say that if you have five companies that were shortlisted, you have So now, now that we only have two out of the five companies that have already um, put in meet the deadline, so to say, we should go ahead with the process. But um, it depends the comfort level of media in terms of Manila and BHC, how they would now meet all the criteria that we have. Because it's a very safe criteria which has been um, put in place. And it will be interesting time to see if Manila and BX meet those um, criteria. Well, according to the MEDA board, in his own words, these two companies have the competence uh, needed to bring the turnaround that ECG is expected to have. Well, I, I well, that, my personal opinion is different from the opinion of MEDA when they do the assessment. Bear in mind, there are a set of criteria that these companies have to be um, judged by. Right. And they get points for each, especially running a similar organization in a certain population in other countries, having a similar environment and all sort of. And we realize that in the consortium also, that 51% of Ghanaian uh, partnership, that is also very key in arriving at who wins the concession. Those things, in my opinion, I don't think those two companies are there yet. But that's my personal opinion. We will have to see what happens when the review is done. Well, we went to see but exactly worried, what, what happened. I am worried that it get pulled out. Come again. Could you, you said you're worried about what said, exactly? I am worried. I am worried that EDF pulled out because it basically um, doesn't give some of us a bit of um, comfort in what's going on. What's the discomfort exactly about EDF not being involved? Well, you realize that if you have the companies that pulled out, let's look at the companies that have pulled out. The companies that are pulled out are Angel, EDF, and Tata. Yes. These are well-known companies around the world that their operation can be verified by going to certain countries. These are the companies that have pulled out. Manila and BXC. BXC is made up of a Chinese consortium. 
Okay, and this Chinese consortium, a part of the consortium, have done something in China. Manila, a part of the consortium, have done something in Philippines. So what I'm saying is that the reason some of us are not comfortable with the process as it is, is that when you have certain well-known companies, part of a process, and they jump off at this stage, it, it gives you worry. But like I said, I, I'm, that, that's my personal opinion. Let's see what uh, media comes up with. Okay, Kojo, let's see what Meta comes up with. Yesterday, the reduction in tariffs has announced took effect. Now, residential customers who are watching us now are expecting the 15% to reflect. Now, the question I asked, one, one of the security men just woke up to me, asked me, is, look, how do I track how much the 15% is having on my pocket? So if I go on to buy a prepaid credit, how am I able to track the 15% reduction in the tariffs? Well, you know, coming forward, um, after the 15th of last month, there was a reckoner. This, uh, this uh, paper that ECG has posted on their website, and you can get a copy of that from ECG's offices all around the country. The reckoner helps you and I calculate how we use our electricity. It tells you clearly what the 15% reduction is in the energy charge, not the taxes. So that is where there's been a lot of confusion in people saying that, oh, what you end up with is not the actual 17.5%. But what has been used is the energy charge. So where you have maybe uh, 30 cents or 30 pesos per kilowatt hour would have been reduced. So those that have the old reckoner can compare it with the new reckoner that's on the ECG website. And they right. will clearly see that the energy charge is less by 17.5%. Now, depending on your usage, if you go to your meter and you see your kilowatt hour readings, you compute that, you multiply that by the amount you're supposed to pay. Okay. Then if you can, if you know how to add on the taxes, it will give you an idea of what you use. But clearly, if you are buying 100 cities every two weeks, from today, you should clearly, that 100 cities should last you for maybe a few days more than the two weeks that it lasts you. If that doesn't happen, I suggest you go to the ECG customer service. Fantastic. Kojo, thank you for your thoughts, as always, uh, for joining us here on Business Focus. Kojo Poku is an energy expert joining us with his thoughts. So that's the, the advice to you. If you're buying 50 cities and it lasts for like two, three days, depending on your appliances that you use in your home, 15% it should add like a couple of days to it. If you're not having that, you can go ask questions of your ECG uh, vendor. But the reduction in the policy rate by the Bank of Ghana by 200 basis points sometime last week reignited the conversation on lending rates charged by commercial banks. Now, the policy rate has been reduced by 750 basis points since 2017 because we ended 2017 at about 550 basis points. Now, here's the news desk report on the rate of reduction of the policy rate by the central bank over the period since 2017. For 2017 alone, the Bank of Ghana reduced its policy rate, which is the rate at which commercial banks borrow from the central bank, by 550 basis points. The rate dropped from 25.5% to 20%. This was subsequently maintained by the Monetary Policy Committee in January this year. But the annual percentage rates, APR, and average interest rates report shows that interest on loans for various categories average 30% as of January this year. For January 2018, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana attributed its decision to maintain the policy rate to its plan to reduce inflation to a target of 8% plus or minus 2 in the next few months. The reduction of the policy rate to 18% means there has been a 750 basis point reduction since 2017. Despite this significant reduction in the base rate, commercial banks' lending rates still remained high, averaging between 29.3% and 31.7% within the same period. In January, the Bank of Ghana governor ruled out the possibility of setting a limit on lending rates. It remains to be seen how banks will respond to this latest reduction. So that's the news desk report on uh, uh, the policy rate. We're going to have a discussion on that very shortly. But let's remind ourselves of the macroeconomic indicators as captured in the 2018 budget. Uh, as we end the first quarter. So you're going to see on your screens very shortly, uh, the overall GDP growth rates about 6.8%.
non-oil GDP growth rate of 5.4 percent, end period inflation rate of 8.9 percent, average inflation rate of 9.8 percent, and fiscal deficit of 4.5 percent of GDP. That's uh, just a bit of a reminder for you. Uh, these figures will not make much of an impact if you do not understand. But fiscal deficit of 4.5 percent uh, of GDP, and uh, you have a primary balance surplus of 1.6% of GDP. So that's clearly uh, how, what the 2018 budget captured. We'll keep reminding you of these macroeconomic indicators so that we're all on the same page in doing the tracking. Edina Mnyatepe is with uh, First Bank. Uh, she joins us in studio. I'll uh, have a discussion on these uh, and, and more. Edina, thank you so much for your time. Uh, good evening to you. Hello, Alfred. Good evening. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you too. Grateful. I hope the city is smiling. Yes, it's really smiling. The news today is better than weeks earlier when I would come in and say that the CD on the interbank level, the CD had depreciated marginally. But on the interbank level, we are currently seeing some appreciation against the dollar. Yes. I so see. from a marginal from the marginal depreciation we're seeing weeks earlier is actually now some marginal appreciation by about 0.26 percent so we continue to see the, the dollar weaken and this has been due to the fears of the trade wars between the u.s and, 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 china. and china yes so this is dampening expectations on the economy the major risk against the dollar against the cd like i said weeks earlier was a rise in the fed rates mm -hmm. and this happened but still investor confidence against the dollar is still dampened. So we are still seeing the CD come out strongly because of the weakness of the dollar. I see. It's always been the case. So uh, we, are we supposed to be excited about this because we're only gaining or uh, able to have the CD gain strength because of the weakness of the dollar, not necessarily because the CD is doing too well? Yes. Right now, what we can do is to enjoy it as it lasts. Yes, because um, really for our inflation, the major risk is the dollar. Mm. So we're expecting to see and inflation trend downwards, downwards supported by the weakness in the dollar. So for, for as long as it lasts, we can continue to enjoy it. Against the euro and the pound, we are seeing the CD depreciate more, more rapidly. The depreciation we are seeing is about negative 3, is about 3% against the CD, yes. So the dollar, we can enjoy it as it lasts, as long as <laughs> the dollar continues to Enjoy it to while it lasts. It reminds me of a particular food. But <laughs> hey, you, we, we started with this, uh, this news desk report of 750 basis point reduction in the policy rate by the central bank, but there hasn't been a corresponding reduction in interest rate by commercial banks. Now, are you expecting any, any drastic or significant reduction in interest rates considering the 200 basis point reduction as announced by the central bank sometime last week? I don't, I don't expect to see any drastic reduction because we are currently seeing banks tighten their lending stance towards private investors mm -hmm. and this has been due to the high non-performing loans on their books. So we are seeing banks turn more towards government treasuries. When you look okay. at the financial results, you realize that some banks reduced their lending by as much as 100% and shifted to government treasuries because of the quality of their assets mm -hmm. on the books. So really I do not expect because to induce them to do the lending, they would want to charge some high rates just to just for some hedging. Yes. So I do not expect some drastic because we saw 550 basis points and that did not yield much. So 200 basis points, I do not expect to see anything drastic. Nothing drastic. Nothing As drastic. against we what we might the, see something marginal, but I've, I've, I've nothing had really bring up the explanation that look, yeah. the, what the central bank can do is not necessarily to to force commercial banks to, to reduce mm -hmm. um, interest rates um, as happened, I think, in Kenya. There was uh, a backlash to, to that effect, but the Bank of Ghana ruled out any limit yes. to, to, to interest mm -hmm. rates. And I think there's banks. some calculation here that goes into the calculation of the interest rates, mm -hmm. and really the, the MPR does not really affect it significantly. So there must be a review of that formula which the banks have been using, and maybe we can see that. Yeah. So what about the, the Bank of Ghana has indicated they, they're, they're looking at that formula. Yes, so that, uh, that should be done uh, and then and, and that, that we can see something significant. But as of now, I don't expect Great. Let, Let's go into the, the commodities market now and let's find out how the commodities are faring. Gold, let's oil and cocoa. Okay. So for Brent, the last time we spoke, it was at about $64 per barrel. But we've seen it rise to $70 mm -hmm. per barrel. And this has been supported by a drawdown in U.S. inventories. The U.S. output is still high, but we've seen a decline in their inventories. Venezuela has also cut 
production and it has hit the lowest in about 30 years. Wow. And there are also fears of the U.S. imposing sanctions on Iran. Mm -hmm. So all these have gone to support the increase in the price of Brent. For gold, we are also seeing um, the prices come out strongly. And this has been due to the weakened dollar. And investors are turning to their safe haven commodity just to hedge their risk. So we are seeing increased demand, and that is what is pushing the price. And for cocoa, the prices are also still very high because of increased demand. And also the forecasts for output has been, the revision, there was an, um, a downward revision of the output forecast by the two largest producers, um, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. So that have, has also supported the decline in prices we have seen. The, sorry, the, the rise in prices we have seen in the last over, couple of over, weeks. Over the period. Yeah. See, let's end with, with the stocks uh, now. And uh, let's start with the major stocks that made some gains over the period of analysis and how you, you, you predict uh, that some stocks will fare in the coming week. Okay. So we've seen some recovery. For a number of weeks, we saw a downtrend, but we are seeing an uptrend now. And one of the stocks that's accounted for the downtrend was Ghana Commercial Bank. It peaked at about seven CDs, but we saw some sell-offs, which pushed the price down and pushed the index down. But now we've seen it make a lot of recovery. So the same stock that pushed the index down yeah. is, has also accounted for the rise we have seen. We've seen stocks like Well, Total, and Cow Bank, which reported very good earnings, also make some, record some gains. Yeah, so that has pushed the index up. Here to date, we are seeing a return of 30%, 30.5% for the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index. For the financial stocks composite index we are seeing is two um, two percentage points higher and it has coming at 32 percent as at thursday when market closed and um, thank you so much as always well, indeed very grateful adinam nyatepe is with fairs bank uh helping us analysis just so you know how your investments are faring as well you can go to bed with that but i want to say thank you so much for spending your easter monday some 60 minutes with us here on business focus stay with us we're getting to news 360. My name is Alfred Okanse. On behalf of the rest of the team, we're grateful to have a good evening.